procedure about the uh, just have a slide, slide, short slides are good. I have a half dozen slides, so let's see here. And down to the side. Okay, so I'm, I'm up in the uh, Lincolnton area. This is Lincoln County, but here's Charlotte down here. And uh, of course, the middle where it actually is, relative to Charlotte. So. so these are these are just some some. Uh, this is a, uh, a crab apple bottle, probably about 10, ten inches tall. And, and um, this is the procedure I'm going to hand out is is mostly for green wood, but of course, you, know, you can step, step aside some of the steps when you're doing growing wood. This is crab apple. The one nice thing about it is, is uh, you can use both the, the highlights of the hardwood and the sapwood in it. And uh, so this is how hollowed out from the bottom. You know, some people will come along and pick this up and he goes, if it's hollow, it's very light. And they go, oh. You know. so it, 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 it goes along with, with the, uh, when you look at a piece, there's the visual aspect. When you go to touch the piece, there, there's the tactile, tactile aspect, or, or, or the, no. and then when you lift it, there's, there's the, uh, the the aspect of, of, of weight and, and uh, heft. So that, that, that's something that can be played with. And each of those, this is a, a walnut dyed black, and it's uh, it, it's from a whole log uh, because. If you want to do something, this is about 14, 15 inches tall. So if you're get something about you know, five or six inches in diameter, uh, you might as well do a wet wood, a uh, green wood. And uh, you make sure that the hole here is centered on the pith. You know, so you're going to relieve that, uh, minimize the uh, cracking and the checking. So you just some you know, various shapes with a few. And the uh, standard Grecian urn, you know, the small top up top. And this is probably about six, eight inches across. And this is hollow from the bottom. So you, you turn it over, and if, you, if, if you're lucky, you can get a good job with the joint and the, and the uh, grain pattern. And if you're doing a, a whole log, of course, the grain pattern is, is going to be somewhat uh, circular. So your 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 uh, joint on the bottom is going to be circular, and you know, you just you know, lots of times it just kind of fits fits together. Um, you know? What wood is that? Oh, this is maple. Okay. It's got a little bit of uh, bark spot on it. And then this is crab apple also, and uh, you, you could say, well, you grew up with the veins here, but but there was a problem up here. So I cut it off and made a picture out of it. All right? So you can do some various, various things you, you can do. Crab apple is interesting. You've got the lighter uh, sapwood on the outside and the dark, you know, sort of reddish brown on the inside. It's similar to walnut, although the, the uh, pattern, when you look at the end of the log, the pattern of the crab apple, of the of the heartwood to the sapling is very erratic, whereas in most woods it's 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 uh, rather uh, rather uh, straight, straightforward. This is a partially done piece. The bottom here, the top, and this will later be shaped and formed you know, into a, a, a little sweep sweep out. Here's the bottom, which will which will get connected, and you want to, want to be very careful about line, lining up the uh, lining up the grain. Because when you go to make the glue joint in the bottom, if the grain is, 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 is lined up, that helps to hide the glue joint. So, what I'm going to do is start out with, and, and bear with me while I use this, uh, use, use uh, uh, Dave's chuck here. I'm just going to start out on this one, and what I've done here 
is marked mark the the uh, put a mark to line up line up the grain all right and so I don't turn it off or sand it off I've marked it down on, on one side all right and sometimes in the shaping process you all of a sudden you got to go ah you know, and, and, it, and, it, and it disappears so the same way here and it did it on both sides. You turn your piece round, especially if it's dry wood, is the center finder. Right? And that'll that'll uh, draw uh, draw draw a line in, in, in after you've marked it. Right? So just yeah, that's a helpful thing. And it's nice maybe if, if you're gonna start doing these things, maybe start out with a small one and then and then go up and then start using green wood. Now, the procedure that I had is designed for turning green wood. And so what, uh, what I'll, I'll try to do is, is uh, go, go through the steps as, as, as we go. So mount the wood between centers. This is the whole, this is the whole chunk of wood, right? And uh, turn, turn the wood to determine what the top and the bottom of your piece is going to be, because you want to see what the grain is internally, right? See how the grain pattern affect the uh, affect the shape and size. And this could be, if you're using a full log, it could be the inter the interaction between the heartwood and, and the sapwood. You know, kind of. It might you can do some some sort of rough shaping. Once you determine that, mount the wood with the top with the top towards the uh, uh, tailstock. Um, if the pith is to be in the piece, this applies to greenwood, obviously. Right? You should center that at the top, so that it gets removed as the center of the neck, right? Where this would be the neck here, and so the pith should be right here. And you, you drill a hole. One thing I find out is walnut is extremely forgiving. Even if you leave the pith in the piece, all right, uh, for 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 a green one. All right, no, you'll need about two inches at the bottom, so the larger piece. And what I've done here is is I've left, I haven't left two inches. I left about an inch or so, but that'll be enough for this because I'm not going to be taking as much away as I would if I were doing green, uh, uh, green wood. All right. So you want to leave your waste block here. Probably about two, two inches of wood, right? And then if you're doing a large piece, um, I, I find hollowing with uh, with screws into the wood from the face plate very, very comforting, right? As as, as to a uh, as to a, a uh, chuck, but you know for small pieces like this, you can get away with a chuck. Uh, so face off uh, number five. Uh, face off the top end for the face plate, right? Drill a hole in the neck deep enough to enter what will be the main cavity of, of your final shape, right? So you may need a long drill if you're going to do a long neck piece, right? Okay. Now, one thing that's very important for any hollow form is, is the hole and the and, and the, the top, that they be concentric, right? Because you can look at something and the, the naked eye of, even people who aren't used to these, uh, you know, vases and things like this, they can pick up the concentricity or the lack of concentricity very, if it's off, just, just, just by a little bit. So you want to try to, try to, try to get them straight. Uh, attach the face plate to the workpiece while we're going to use it. Yeah. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make a tenon on the dry wood. Uh, um, when you're using green, number seven. When you're using green wood, um, if, if you're gonna have a, a small top, the wood may be this big. The screws are gonna go in to an area that's gonna be removed anyway. All right. So you can use pretty good sized screws. If you're doing the Grecian urn with a short neck then you need to be careful about the length of, uh, of screws that you use. But 
those screw holes will be turned away. Right? When, 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 when if you're using green wood. But the dry wood, you don't, you don't have to worry about that because you're not going to use a chuck if it's small enough. Uh, okay. Then part the waste block from the bottom. Uh, you can shape the vessel, uh, leaving wood for support at the top, and almost final side. You can part the part the waste block because uh, that's giving you leaving the leaving the waste block on leaves you, gives you support with the from, from the tail stock, right? which is important, especially if you, have, if you have a long piece, and it'll 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 make your turning uh, uh, more more concentric. You'll get a better job with the with the, with the tool because you'll have less less vibration. So that that would be that would be uh, uh, set up set up here, right? And then you would part this piece off. Okay. Now when you when you make a tenon for the chuck, it's important that this surface right here, for especially the one-way chucks and most other chucks, be perpendicular to the to the to to the tenon. All right, and you want to have a shoulder here on just about any hollowing that you or any turning you do, um, because it it has to rest on the top of the jaws. Of the chuck, and that's where you get your strength and stability from. The the, the tenon, the jaws gripping the tenon, are basically just holding it, um, holding the wood. All right, your your your, your strength and stability is, is from the contact here between the tops of the jaws and the and the, uh, and the piece. So it's. Uh, Do a little what I thought I would do with this one is just kind of like, like I make a, a little gourd shape, you know, without, with, without, a, without a neck on it. And I'm just going to do the basic, uh, basic shape. Yeah.
What I'll do is just back off. I'm going to start hollowing with this uh, or boring bar. And all this is is a three quarter inch, three three quarter inch bar, right? With a hole in it that'll accept a quarter inch machine tool bit. And you can shape the ends of the machine tool bits however you want. So, and these things are very nice for doing little small little details on on spindles. And uh, they're a lot cheaper to sharpen than than a regular turning tool. And you can create all sorts of different shapes. Okay. This is this is a good one for doing uh, to getting in for beads. You get in, you make that real fine cut, and we have two beads coming together. Now, down the wind and, you know, and just sharpen. Once it's dull, you just sharpen both ends again and replace the burr on, on the top. Because that, that, that's what's doing the cutting. And if you're very careful about backing it out, backing it out both ways, you'll get a very nice, smooth, smooth surface. So, and uh, another thing that somebody had mentioned to me when I was, when I was doing a, a demo one time was he saw someone who had <clears throat> not only rounded off the, the 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 ends here, but then ground a flute in it using a uh, just a uh, what I used was a a uh, Conical, Dremical, Dremel uh, grinding, grinding cone, right? And uh, I tried doing it on, on carbon steel and went through one of those little grinding stones. I mean, well, and yet, you know, I looked at it and, oh, it says carbon steel. <laughs> so, high-speed steel, and uh, what you're doing is, instead of creating, now, here's your, here's your, here's your uh, ground surface. Okay, that's your ground. And here's the top. Here's the top of the, of the machine tool. <coughs> so you're a nice corner there. You can do some nice cutting. But once you ground that little flute in, what you've done is you've done this. So you've made more of a cutting edge on it. So it takes a little bit less, less pressure. And you just grind them. And once they get ground back, you just grab, grind back a little bit. And you can go as deep into that flute as you want. And you get pretty good control holding on to this. And you make your own handle out of wood. Of course we're wood turners. Right? And you just make a, 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 a curve from a bandsaw. God, this goes in about three, three and a half inches. And then cut a thing out here and it's ba you basically made a collet chuck here. So just relieve this and they, and they, come, they come apart. So, look at We'll just start out, we'll just do a little, little, little bit of hollowing because hollowing is uh, boring. Thank you. 
516th bolt. Then I got a 516th eye bolt, and it's about the same size as a three-quarter inch, three-quarter inch uh, rod. And so you just tap the bolt onto onto the rod, and and uh, uh, what that makes for you is is it, it turns and it gives you complete freedom of movement. Right? And if you have a three-quarter bar. With a, a quarter inch set screw, 516 set screw, and a hole that will take a quarter inch machine tool bit, then this this will just slide in and out very, very, very easily. And then your hand is not providing the, the so almost all the force in your hollowing is going into your body pushing it. Right? It makes things go a lot. Smoother and safer that way.
think this one is uh, <coughs> whoever whoever designed it. It's not Sorby. Memory me memory cards, doesn't it? <laughs> so this will get you in uh, around the corners. But the important thing you have to think of is is you want the you want the uh, the cutter to be fairly in, well in line with the axis of the shaft here, okay? So that when when you're uh, if if this were straight and the bit were on that, you, you have a tendency for it to for it for it, 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 it to torque on you and roll, and that can you know lead to uh, uh, not much fun or can even be dangerous. If you're doing like an urn thing, all right, then this will get in around the corner, right? So, so this would go in and then come in and, 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 and even in here, you'd use it to, to go up in the inside here, okay? So as far as, you know, how Halloween is concerned, that, that I think is enough. Does anybody have any questions? About, uh, about hollow. Have you done hollow forms? Yeah. What, what sort of system do you do? I like the easy wood tool. Hmm? I like the easy wood tool that's got the crooks on it. Easy wood? Yeah. Easy okay. wood tool. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the new ones. I haven't done uh, a, a whole lot of hollowing lately, so I just stick with the old stuff, you it's know, got the before all this started coming out. Yeah, it's got carbide cutter on it, so it's right. nice real right. well. Yeah. And what do you do for wall thickness? Depends on what it is, of course. You know, what, how do I measure it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah with calipers. Yeah, calipers. Yeah. I use calipers. Calipers. Well, fingers. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers are a caliper. Yeah. Um, I got pretty good, pretty good. Right. About it, and I can just feel the. Yeah, yeah. After the lathe is stopped, right? Mm -hmm. Usually. Yeah, <laughs> oh, most of the time. Let me check. Well, yeah, you could get a little tricky getting. When you're dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
tear out the screws. Yeah, put the face plate. And then you got to go back and redo all, the, all, 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 all that you've done. I have a hole to tighten it, tighten it this way. Ah. <laughs> okay. So what I've done here is I've I've uh, taken the piece that's been hollowed. Okay. And you know it was sitting in here like sitting in here like that. Yeah. And I've got it marked here for realignment, and I've got this one marked here for realignment, and I've got this marked all, all, all the way down, all the way down here. So what I'm going to do is put this in, all right, put this in the chuck, and then shape the tenon to go into the hole, all right, removing as, as little wood as possible, but still Looks like I'm going to have about, about a sixteenth of an inch deep, deep tenon. And the grain is fairly straight, so we should be able to get it uh, uh, lined up pretty well. Uh, one, one thing for making uh, uh, thin saw curves in dry wood is a uh, either a standard back saw or the uh, Japanese real thin, real, real thin. You can you can start start where you're gonna where where you're gonna separate something, say with a with a with, with a skew, and then stop it and then just start and then just start sawing. And, and, and turning it towards you slowly, slowly, slowly. And it's amazing, it's amazing how well you can do. Um, well, well here's, an, here's an end. Well, I went in with, a, with a, about a 16th parting tool. And then this is a saw on the surface right here. Right? And so it's, it's, it's fairly strong. There's little scratch marks on it, you know, but... But, it, but it's fairly smooth. It, a, 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 a good saw for green wood is something with a large set like that, you know, large, large uh, gullets. And th this looks like this would probably work pretty well. There's another one. Um, the one I use is uh, called a shark, and it's a short remodeling saw. And I think they're less than fifteen dollars from. Uh, Lowe's or or or, or other places like that. So. so those are good for green wood. Now, if you try to use a back saw in green wood, it's just going to gum up. You because know, the gullets are real, real tiny, right? So let's just uh, face this off. Okay, you're following this very closely. So where were we? <laughs> Okay, okay, we're down. We did uh, so far. We've done true the hole number seventeen. Mm -hmm. All right, um, true the hole in the vessel bottom for gluing. All right, then, then hollow the vessel to the quarter inch wall thickness up to your support column, which I'm considering this this part here to be the support column. Okay, or or if, if it were a bigger piece, this would probably be a little, you know, that would probably be larger. One thing that one thing I I I, I came up with is is to try to find out uh, uh, what you 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 measure. This is half of a, a one inch dowel, and while while not while this is running, but. And, 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 and you can mark this in inches if, if you want, like a, the other one I lost. But if you stick that in there and put your finger here, then come out and line it up on the outside and look down at it, you can see what your wall thickness is on both sides. 
right? This will be like this. You got that? So you can see on, on both, you can see the, see the walnut on, on both sides of the, of the maple bell. All right, I think it's handy. And if you have a couple of these, I mean, going a little bit further with it, stuff like that. But that's another way of, of quickly, quickly measuring. And you can go in and come back out, and you go, oh, man, it's pretty thick. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't take off the ball. It's just a little, just a little bit. Okay. Sure, I'm shaping that guy's side. Mount the waste block on the face plate and turn the bottom tenon about three-eighths long. Well, if you have a large vessel, I would suggest something three-eighths. This is only going to be about three-sixteenths or, 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 or uh, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Don't forget the grain realignment mark. Okay, we got it marked all, all the way down through the middle. And we got it marked up here. So, once I face this off, then what I have to do is make sure. Yeah, Mark, pet me. Okay. What I'm going to do is is make sure that this comes back all the way. Because I'll probably get carried away. Yeah. You know, because I'm going to make a tenon, and that part of that that mark was going to disappear. All right. So. Uh, Dividers. We have a hole, and we're going to mark the size of the tenon. Right. And this is going to mark the tenon. They want to go a little oversized. All right. So you don't have to measure here, and this will. This will do it for you. So set it up here. And then, okay, so just a little oversized. You, you can always, if the tendon is too large, you can always take wood off, right? You can put it back on again, but the glue joints look like that. Yeah, that was terrible. All right, so let's, uh, let, let, let's do that. surface. Now I'm going to mark this. You get about dead center. And turn on the leg and you mark it with the point on, on the left. Alright? You don't want the point on the right to catch the wood, because if it does, it'll come over and smack your fingers. So you want to yeah, just get it off at a slight angle. And you're going to cut a little groove. And the groove, that's too big. And you move in about half that. Okay. Now that one, that one lines up. I don't know if the camera is, is able to pick that up. But that means so that second groove lines up with the with the leg on the right. Okay. So that's the size. That's the size of the tip that I want to go to. Because 
and make the other one bigger, I can do my initial turning right to the bigger spring. some tedium and nausea in just about everything we do. It's like sanding and then hollowing. But this is what happened. But, you know, you can move that table to fit really, really, really nice. And if you get carried away and take too much off, then it's going to be very loose. And it's too loose, then you got to go in and take, take, and, and remove the idea. I like this one-way live center because uh, it's got these two cones 
And uh, this one goes on here too. It can go into larger holes, or this way it can go up against a flat surface and stabilize it. And be like a jam chuck. Okay? So, and then this is good for, you know, getting in the center of the holes. And of course, uh, we've got the uh, points to it. And I, 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 I've made something here where this will go in to the uh, tapered hole that's in the end of the uh, live center. And it's just a piece of wood. And it, that can be used as a jam chuck for, for, for small fires. Right. Then you can put something maybe in there, some non-slip material. Hi, right, John. Thanks for coming. Yeah. And then, of course, they have the, uh, they have the point center, of course. And then the Frank Sudol. Have you ever seen Frank Sudol demo? Uh, never heard of him? Well, he died a few years ago. Very, very famous for the very tall, very thin, uh, hollow forms pierced with animal fingers on them and stuff like that. The man was with that. They said, you can take this and throw it out. Well, there are some issues. <laughs> Okay, what I'm going to do is glue this now. He was one of the leaders in, in uh, doing uh, uh, hollow form piercing and stuff like this. Now, he did hollow forms like this, this high, and then piercing. So, you know, you've got to get down to like below a sixteenth of an inch in order to do reasonable piercing. And then, of course, when you got through all the holes and stuff, and he, 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 he could draw well. You know, he draw his hand on the faces and fingers on, and then go around and, 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 and Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, we're going to smear glue on here, on both surfaces, and we're going to bring the tailstock up for not only as a clamp, but to align it with the hole. This is going to be the hole in the top, top of the tube, and then we'll, and then we'll have a beer, while well, 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 the glue dries. Figured this bit. Suggest, I think it says it on there, is is to put some glue on the outside here, and and because it's going to come off, but that will help. That will help uh, hold the piece onto the. Dark enough to hide the passage. But I had it here. Let that dry for a little bit. Um, if, if, if you start, usually, nicely, then, then, 
now you'll start to form the top. Okay? But usually, uh, if, you, if, if you start too soon, then the pieces will slip and the glue will set just like that. <laughs> so really, all the, all the care that you've taken. All right. Anybody have any comments or questions? Thoughts? What are those bits you use over there, high-speed steel leg bits? Um, on, on these bits? Yeah. Yeah. What I use is a quarter-inch high-speed steel. Okay. And they're the two-inch. And they're, they're used in metalworking, so they're, they're meant to remove metal. So they should remove wood pretty well, too, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, once they get a little bit, and, 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 and these are easy to sharpen, you basically take them out, put them on the platform of, 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 of the uh, grinding wheel, and just sharpen it. Right? You know, until you see the burr come, the sparks come over the top. Then, then you know you have it. Right? And when you, when you have a shape like this, you can use this for, for scraping, final scraping of little round fillets, say in the bottom of a bowl, where the foot comes up to the base of the bowl, you make a nice little fillet in there, you can use these as a little scraper in there. There's a lot of things you can do with them. I don't think you use them anymore, so. No, look, I'll leave a second. Come on. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I've got a stone on the end of a third horse that loaded put on the leg of my leg with a finger. Anybody time the uh, glue joint? I mean, can we back the tail sock off now? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Let's see. If anything flies off, then you can go right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you should stand over there. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Is she going to let you in the shop? <laughs> I read a hat.
you wondering why I have the face mask on? I am. <laughs> See that the inner hole slopes away a little bit, all right? So what I'm going to do is wrap a piece of sandpaper, this is 120 grit, that's uh, this one. And you see the glue splatter coming out here? This way, right? You can see more of this one. Which means I'm going down. What I do is I shape this part on the inside up, up in there. So when I'm finished, you look down in there and you'll see the inner hole go like this, as opposed to straight there. Which I think is a little bit, a little bit nicer. So now, so now we have we have that set up. We have the whole lot. I'm going to dress dress it up pretty well. So now what I'm going to do is come in and remove.
Now, if I were doing Greenwood here, what I would do is I would go in, I would go in further, and depending on the diameter and the size of the piece, is to how far down you go, because that's all got to dry in there. So if you have a, 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 a fairly large piece, you probably want to turn it down about five eighths or maybe or maybe three quarter inch diameter. A small piece, even green, and turn it down about a half. Because then you have to put this on the, it's going, to, it's going to dry, right? Then you have to mount this back up on the lathe, and, and you want this to dry fairly evenly too, because this is where your blue joint is going to be. But we, but we can take this off because, it, because, it's, uh, yeah, because it's dry wet. In order to do the bottom, that little stub tenon now is I'm going to turn this, cut this off with a saw, and that will turn this around, and then the, the stub tenon will go in here, and I can bring the bring the uh, uh, tail 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 tail, tail stock up, right? So, you have a bit more. I want to leave a little stub on the uh, on the bottom here to go into the uh, to be held by the uh, tailspin.
So that little stub will hold this. Right? And then, uh, here's a, here's a, here's a, 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 a good suggestion for you, and that is, if you, if you, uh, if you leave a little cone, a cone-shaped uh, nipple like it, like this, that will go into the, the inside cone of the tailstock, right? So you can realign any green turning that's warped and distorted if you leave that little, little uh, uh, taper, tapered stub there. It's, it's, it does the same thing as using the, the point in here and then using the hole to line up. However, when you turn a green walnut, what happens with the steel and, and the wood that stays in contact with the steel for a while? It's black, doesn't it? All right? And oak is even worse because it's a light wood. Now, if, if uh, and, 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 and the point, the point is going to extend out probably about a quarter of an inch or so, right? So that means that the bottom of your piece, whatever it is, is going to have to have enough wood there to remove that hole, right? But if it's stained, if the oak is stained, then it's going to be a dark spot. You're going to have to remove more wood to get rid of that dark spot, which then you can, you can put a hole through. So, the safest thing to do is to leave this little cone and take the point out and put the cone right, right inside. This is a little oversight, but, but I think it will fit. So, I've got a little piece of... Uh, These are the non-woven pads that, that you can buy six, six inch by nine inch non-woven pads. And the black is similar to four wrought steel wool. And you actually buff the wood with it before you put any finish on it. And actually buffing the wood uh, before you put a finish on it will show up scratches. And then you can and the And this provides a sort of a non-slip surface here, hopefully.
read that. One way also to hide the joint is if, if you went in and, and made a, 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 a taper going in, yeah. the joint could be then on that slanted, slanted side. stub any any way you want to. Right. Yeah, this can be this can be carved off and then finally sanded and stuff like that. But but there but there we have a little Is that the way you normally take them off? Hmm? You curve curve the um Yeah I use your rotary, rotary burrs okay. and then go in with uh, with with a real small uh, power sanding disc. Right? And and just and and, and just in. So when, while while it's up here like this, you can also clean this all up, finish sanding it and everything else. But but we're not gonna go through that because you know, because that, that that you already know how to do. That's pretty slick. But that you know, that that's the way that now you can see when you look down inside yeah. there, you know, it does <coughs> it does it it does curve away. And it gives you the illusion that you you've taken a little bit extra time to just as opposed to just leaving a straight hole through there. That's a great idea. Yeah, because it looks like a piece of pottery. Right. Right. I mean, that's the way a pot would be formed. Very neat. And then, if you're a little bit more careful with the, uh, you know, with you know, you have to talk. You know, you can you can probably do a little. But then, that's not bad on that illusion. Yeah, you can sand, of course, you know, before you take it off, or, or, or even now, you can put it back on, and then get in there and sand a little bit, right? Or leave that stub a little bit longer, and it can be a little bit more room to work in here, too. Mm. There's a variety of, thing, of, 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 of things you can do. Very cool. Huh. And then you can get bigger. <laughs> so that's the process. Man, and, good question. Yeah. How'd you get that hollered out through that little bitty hole? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. See? Yeah. And, and, and if, the, if, the, if the if the grain, like if you use the full log, then the grain would be would be circular. And it could match the, the glue joint. I mean, if you're lucky. See, and that's why you could charge for it. Or you can plan it that way. It's so much longer to do, right? Yeah, or you can plan it that way. <laughs> yeah. uh, with, with, with some of these, I came up with a story where, where I, uh, I, 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 I would take a piece of, 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 of wire screening, had to be steel screening, and I'd wrap it around the piece and put a couple of electrical connections to it, right? And and uh, and, and then and, and even, even, even cover the hole, right? And it would feed carpenter rants into it. And then, and then wrap it all up, turn it upside down, and then put a charge on it. And it, the thickness, the thickness of the, of the ball, of, of, of the piece, would be a function of how much charge you had on that. Because the ants don't want to go close to electrical charge. As soon as the sawdust starts dropping out, well, you know you're finished. <laughs> the ants are finished. And my wife says, "Don't tell anybody." That. <laughs> 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 
So that's a good answer to that question. <laughs> And, and you can use that. You have my permission. <laughs> okay. That's all I have. And if anybody has any you know, questions, comments, please open up. So, try it out. Try it out. There weren't a whole lot of tools here. Um, if, if you've been doing some hollowing, well then, you know, hollowing is hollowing. But the important thing is, is, uh, is uh, the first one I, I remember about, about going in part way and going to a certain, you want to end up with a quarter inch wall thickness, which is a reasonable wall thickness. And it gives you a reasonable drying, drying time. I've got a, 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 a hollow form. You know, go to a half inch, go in about two or three inches, and then go in to a quarter of an inch, going in about an inch at a time. Right? And then you work your way down. As soon as you're down in there, then you make the cavity a little bit bigger, right? Maybe more mass in there, and then you can actually then shape the outside a little bit more, go down a little bit more. Leave leave the mass there, go, going to the chuck or the or the faceplate, right? To support to support the hollow. Once you get down to the you can end, you can, you can go to your flank. You can go to your flank a little bit. Like that. And then whatever whatever you use, whatever tools you use, whatever gimmicks you use, you know, for, for, for wall thickness and stuff like that, there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of them out there. I've got a hollowing system too with the laser like you were talking about. Yeah, a little laser and pointer. I don't use it as much as I do use the easy wood hollowing tool. It's just so much, uh, I don't know, I just got used to using it. Well, how, how does that gauge your wall thickness? Other than you knowing that's a certain on which one the laser? No, no, on, on the on, on, on the easy tool. I uh, just by using the calipers. For yeah, the calipers. Yeah. Isn't there a way to set up set up the the little uh, pointer on the on the easy tool? No. Oh. Okay. No, it's attached to the uh, hollowing system. No. <coughs> it's up over the top, and then right. you have the hollowing card that's down here. Right. You just adjust it for your wall thickness. Right. right. Yeah, I, 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 I've never used one. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I've seen them. And they make sense. As soon as the dot disappears, you're at your wall thickness. You know? yeah. so, so it's good. It's handy for, like, uh, deeper things, like, you know, if you're making a deep oh, yeah. base or something like yeah. that. But yeah. if it's sh narrow, shallow like this, I just as I'm using an easy wood tool. Well, can... if you do a few of them and you're using similar woods, yeah. you know, you can hear. It, exactly. you, can, you can actually hear the wolf in this yeah. as you're getting out here. Yeah. But you know, I, can't, I can't stress enough that the way of, of stepping... Step, stepping your way down. Because if you don't do that, you know, if you go down a quarter inch and then you come back up to clean up a little bit, I think it's not a round hole. Oh, yeah. And that's a little short. And, 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 and so you have some serious problems. Well, great when I'm making my cowboy hats, I use the light. You know, you've done that. Well, that, well yeah, I have. But, but only on light wood. Yes. Uh, 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 I mean, I, I, I've gone down real thin on walnut, yeah. and it just does not work. It just like, and, and this is this is using a, 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 a strong light from the outside, and using the uh, the uh, armored uh, fiber optic cable thing on the inside. You know, and then and then looking to see if it's coming through. Yeah. You, know? you must do a lot of walnut. Work with walnut. Oh, 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 I love walnut. Now, where do you where do you find that crab apple? That's really pretty. Wood. Oh, crab apple is it's it's prevalent and and it's very susceptible to bug infestation. So get hold of a of a, of a wood person, a, a tree person, and tell them you'd like to get some wood with Or walnut is really craggly, it's craggly, you know. And you can probably check that and you'll find it on this one side of the road. That's what I was telling Pam, yeah. so we need to contact somebody that's doing some tree work. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, yes. sir. We'll see you again sometime. Thank you. 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 Thank Keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs>